Welcome to the Daily Update. We'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, November 8th, and then we'll see how things look for Thursday, November 9th. We're still pretty comatose right now. We actually saw a little bit more movement in Wednesday session, but nothing has really been decided. We're still looking positive, but we're still below overhead resistance, and we're also potentially coming into a time of negative seasonality that I'll go through as I go through all the different charts later on. Let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we did have a slightly higher open with prices climbing to R1 at 43.91 before falling back down to the unchanged level, which on an up day tends to be a support level. However, we ended up falling down below the unchanged level down to the daily pivot at 43.71. We went down to S1 at 43.60. That was when the low for the day was set. We spent the rest of the day rising back above the daily pivot, the unchanged level, and then we closed slightly positive. It really wasn't a gangbuster day by any means, but the fact that we did recover off of the lows, that can be taken as positive, and it goes in the books as a positive day. We were up 0.10% on below average volume. That's still the theme that we've been seeing so far this week. The market's been pretty much chopping sideways. You can take that as, okay, that's negative in the fact that we need more volume to have the market go up. You can take that as positive saying there's not a lot of selling coming in. And if we really start to go down on an increase in volume, that could turn things more negative. The technicals were still positive and we're kind of not changing all that much right now. There's a few little things here and there and I have some different charts to show you. But for the most part, we're positive, but we're overextended to the upside, but we're still below that resistance level. It's about inflation, interest rates, growth concerns, and earnings that are being released. And geopolitically, it's mostly about Israel and the whole situation going on there. Some comments. The mega caps, again, they held up better, but the small caps ended up declining. We saw a ferociously up day last Friday, or just a ferocious update, and they were up almost 3%, and then it, that seems to be what happens with the small caps now. They have a huge update, and then they spend the next two, three, four, five days giving that back as people are selling into strength, and then seeing things coming down, so then they sell because they're afraid of not locking in some profits, but that's not a real healthy market environment. We need the small caps and the mid caps to be participating as well. The mid caps are showing some improvement that I'll tell you about here. The NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100 did advance slightly, not a real big day, but especially for the NASDAQ 100, we closed above a pretty important resistance level. And the fact that we're still above that is positive for right now. Oil did close down, so this is becoming less of an issue for the market. It's at 75.42. It's still higher than it was before, but we're coming back down to prices where the market doesn't seem to be as freaked out by that. On a short-term basis, this list has not changed. It's the Stoke RSI, the Williams Percent R, the CCI 14. The 20 is still not there yet. The Stochastics, and they're becoming even more extended. The Force Index, and then the rate of change going back five periods. Intermediate term, we still have the CMB composite, the PMO studies, and the ultimate oscillator. And we don't get an awful lot of signals from the ultimate oscillator, so we kind of want to pay attention to that one. The current scenario, this is the same that it's been now for over a couple of months. And I put a question mark in, the economy is stronger than expected, question mark. That's starting to be debated a little bit. We're seeing more of a consensus of economic reports that are coming out that are more market-friendly and that are weaker than what they had thought, we're just maintaining that balance right now where weaker economic reports are okay until we get to the point where they're not okay anymore. Then they're going to be concerned about the economy getting too weak. But we're, we're not there yet. We're still at this point where good news is bad news and bad news is kind of good news. And we do know that the Fed's going to keep rates higher for longer. They pretty much have said that. What we're not sure about is if they're going to have to raise rates. So far, it's looking like that is not real possible. But that could change going forward from here. We're still waiting to see what kind of information we get out of China to see how their economy is doing. Keeping an eye on what's happening in Israel. Oil prices, which are becoming a little less relevant, but they could come roaring back in at any time. 
and then earnings as they are released. The dollar was down and interest rates were down, and this helped both give some support to stocks. We have another addition back to our list again. The 10 to the 5 is back to being inverted, where the 10 to the 2-year and the 10 to the 3-month are still inverted. Sentiment ticked down just a little bit on a slight update. We closed at 40, where yesterday we ended up being at 41, still negative. So we are trying to trend a little bit higher. But as we've been chopping sideways, folks are getting a little bit nervous about things. And I have a couple of charts to show you that. Our trend is still positive. The ADX is still weakening because it's below its moving average. However, it's still above 20. So that is a trending environment. The green line is on top. So we would default to positive. Our bias is still positive. We, even though we're having these minuscule days of upward movement, we're still positive with our bias and our momentum continues to be positive. The economic reports that came out, and I don't have charts to show you. I'm to try to keep the videos from being too long. I'm only going to try to show those reports that really tell us something and that really influence the market. But I can tell you about them right here. The weekly MBA Mortgage Applications Index was up 2.5% from the previous week, where it was down 2.1%. And wholesale inventories were up 0.2%. They expected them to be unchanged. Last time, they were down 0.1%. We closed at 4.52%, a little bit more of a decrease with the interest rate on the 10-year. Now, this is still an issue because it's above that 4.02%, which starts to bite into corporate profits, but it has been coming down where just a couple of weeks ago, we were dealing with 5%. Here's the intraday chart where we did go a little bit higher right at the open and we made it up to R1. Again, these pivot points are so close right now because the, they're calculated based on the previous day. And we've been so flat so far this week that it doesn't take much of a move to get to one of these R or S levels. But we came up to R1, then that's when we fell back. We danced along the unchanged level, came down to the daily pivot, and then it looked like, okay, maybe we are going to take things lower. But we hit S1 down here, found support there, and then spent the rest of the day coming back up and closing slightly positive. We are seeing growth and value kind of equal right now. The red line and the blue line are not very far from each other, but they were both down in the session. But this, when we look at the S&P 500 growth to value ratio, this continues to show some improvement. We were down as of Friday, and that was a big warning sign because we were really up with the market and to have growth really come down. Well, as we've been chopping sideways, we are seeing some intraday improvement with the growth to value ratio. On an end-of-day basis, ticking back up just a little bit, but not showing up all that much, but it's not falling off a cliff. This really came down after Friday's session, and now that we're going back up, is slightly positive. We're also keeping an eye on this other way to measure growth versus value. This is continuing to break out above this recent sideways trend that we have been seeing. So this is showing some improvement here. And I wanted to show mid-cap growth versus value because we're not breaking out yet, but we're holding up okay. The small caps aren't looking all that great right now, but the mid-caps continue to hang in there and they're in a longer-term uptrend. So that's another area that earlier in the year was showing some good solid strength. If we can get the mid-caps back to doing better based on price, that would really help the market overall. Here's the condition of the trend. The dark black line here is the ADX, and it's below its moving average and declining. So that's a weakening trend. It's still above 20, so it is a trend. The green line's on top, and the red line's down below, so that means green is positive, so we default to the positive. Here's the short-term version of that, where the ADX is below its moving average, green line on top, red line on bottom, above 20. So we're trending in the short and intermediate term. Keeping an eye on the VIX, where we're still wondering, are we coming into that period where the VIX really starts to decline? It's really hard to match this up because there aren't specific dates on this chart. We just kind of go with what we see visually. The ulcer index, though, is showing that fear is really starting to decrease. It's actually dropping down below the moving average. And the VIX on the line chart did decline, and the VIX with the bar chart is also declining, showing that fear is really coming out of the market. Volatility picked up just a little bit here with the VIX of the VIX. It came up, but it's still below its moving average with the bar chart as well as the line chart. The VIX to VVIX ratio is starting to turn down just a little bit. This could be longer term positive, but we need to see follow through with this. 
The VIX to the three-month average of the VIX, it's rolling over just a little bit. It's hard to see with this red moving average, but it has started to roll over. However, longer term, it's still going up. The VIX to move ratio continues to drop off. It ticked up a little bit in Wednesday session, but we're below the moving average and the red line is starting to turn back down, showing that volatility in stocks is starting to really lessen. Now, this is one thing, and I can't show this chart a lot because it's the last one that's updated. I've been trying to wait longer before I download all the charts, but this is kind of interesting. Does the market anticipate something based on this chart? We saw a real spike up with the equity put call ratio. Now, this is just a daily chart. It's not taking any averages over a period of time. But the fact that this really spiked up, that means a lot of folks are starting to hedge their positions. We're not seeing that in the VIX. We're not seeing that in some other fear gauges that we follow, but we are seeing that here. And to have this really go up as, as strong as it did in Wednesday's session, maybe they're anticipating some kind of a decline here to protect their positions. However, what it's done with our five period simple moving average is it's kicked it back up. We had been positive where we were declining, but with that big update that we saw on Wednesday, that's getting calculated into the whole mix now. So this is starting to go back up. This is turning more negative in the shorter term. When we look at the longer simple moving average based on 253 periods, we're still going up overall. We're trying to turn down. It's really hard to see. You need a magnifying glass. But for the most part, this still is going up and that's longer term negative. Where this fear gauge continues to fall, just like the VIX has been falling. And this other fear gauge, it ticked up just a little bit, but overall it has been declining lately. Looking at the risk on risk off ratio, showing some improvement here, but we need to see more follow through. It was barely unchanged. And then this red line that I have just denoting the overall direction, this continues to decline. So it's showing weakness, but possibly some improvement. We look at the advanced decline line. We're still above the moving average based on price, even though we declined. We declined based on volume and we're below the moving average, but we're still seeing a little bit of strength internally. The new highs are really outnumbering the new lows. So our five period is going up and our 10 period is also advancing. That's showing a little more internal strength. But we're seeing a little weakness when we look at the advanced decline ratio. We're still positive since we're above zero, but we're declining with the blue line and the red line. Accumulation distribution. This tries to measure the smart money, and this is looking okay here. We're getting pretty far above this red line, and the red line is starting to go back up. So that could be positive for the market. The chicken money flow then is giving us a little bit of a warning sign where it actually declined. However, the red line is still continuing to go up, even though it's flattening out right now. Here's the daily chart, and I've tried to clean this up just a little bit where I've extended this trend line down. We have this underside of this trend line that we just cannot seem to get through. It's helping our chart look a little bit better, and I'll try to point that out later on. But another area that I've neglected to point out is you see this gap over here. When we were really starting to go down, we have overhead resistance right where we're at, and then we have a gap. And sometimes that can produce overhead resistance as well. So not only do we want to see a close above this conglomeration of prices, we want to get into and possibly above this gap that was given to us back in the early part of October. Oh, and then on the bottom, you see where we have yet another day on below average volume. And so that's starting to decline here with our volume oscillator, but it's still above the zero line, meaning that in the bigger picture, it's still above average. And I wanted to show you the 20 period simple and exponential moving average. Not because it's really telling us all that much, but the blue line is starting to cross above the red line. And in good positive environments, that's what we see happening. This means that the exponential moving average, which is the blue line, and it does move faster than the red line, is actually going up when compared to the simple moving average. The exponential moving average calculates by putting more weight into more current prices where the simple moving average takes all 20 days and they're all treated the same. We look at the force index. It's coming down a little bit, but it's still at the upper end of this Keltner band. So it's extreme positive. The Stoke RSI is still pegged at extreme positive. The Williams percent are pegged at extreme positive. The CCI 14 turning down a little bit, but still extreme. The CCI 20 is not on here. We're also starting to get more extreme in the short, short-term stochastics, the intermediate short-term stochastics, 
and the long short-term stochastics. And the reason why I say that is this is a further subdivision of the short-term time frame. <clears throat> then looking at the rate of change going back five periods, we are dropping down, but we're still above this blue line, just barely. And the standard deviation going back 10 periods and taking the average movement during that time, we're still starting to go up. As more of these days that really saw positive action are getting figured into the calculation. We look at the NYSE cumulative advanced decline line. It did drop back down. So the broader market was weaker than the big stocks. And with the S&P and NASDAQ 100, we're also declining a bit with our regular advanced decline line for the NYSE. Also declined with our other measure of the NYSE advanced decline line and below this recent death cross. That's bigger picture negative. Here's another thing that could be a warning sign. The Swinland trading oscillator. It turned down after Monday. Well, now it turned down after Tuesday and it's turning down again after Wednesday. So this led us before we saw the big upward move. Is it going to lead us now if, if we start to see some weakness here? And looking at our advanced decline line studies, we are declining with the NYSE. We declined a little bit with the S&P, the mid caps, and the small caps. The go no go is turning to a lighter shade of blue, and that tends to be more of a of a neutral positive now, where it was brown and now it's blue, and it's producing a go in on this automated trading system. The TTM squeeze has finally switched over to positive. It has a lighter shade of blue. So this is looking better on a momentum basis. The balance of power is above the dash line and showing improvement. That's turning positive. The midpoint for our highest high, lowest low calculation is starting to go back up. That's turning more positive. The CMB composite has now spent a number of days extreme positive. And the 50 period moving average, we're still above both of them. The blue line has not crossed above the red line here yet, but it is starting to turn up slightly. The 100 period, we're still in between the exponential and the simple moving average. And looking at all of our moving averages, we still have some overhead resistance above current prices at about the 20 period moving average. I, I don't know if that's right. That's the 100 period moving average. Yeah, that's the purple. Okay, Ichimoku cloud also possibly coming into resistance here. We're getting a little bit deeper into the red cloud. The vortex has crossed over positive. The green line crossed over the red line, so that has now switched to positive. Ease of movement also crossing back above zero. That is turning positive. The bullish percent index still hanging in there for right now. It's not above 50 yet, but it is showing some improvement after going extreme negative and then crossing back above 30. So our summation index based on price continues to advance, and we're starting to show some real improvement based on volume. We're just barely starting to crack above the midpoint. And our NYSE summation index based on price and volume continue to advance. The elder impulse system for the S&P still remains positive with green bars. The RSI 14 is still hanging in there, as is the nine period, and neither are extreme, at least yet. On balance volume, also showing some improvement above the red line and the red line starting to turn up. We're not really showing an awful lot here with our 200-day simple moving average study of those stocks inside the S&P. That was pretty much flat. We ticked up just a little bit when we look at the 50-period moving average study. We're still above this 100% retracement level for the S&P. The reason I'm keeping this here is if we do start to see some weakness, will this level end up providing support at about at about 43.25? Longer term, also keeping this on here because we're above this 61.8% retracement level. If we fall, will that offer support? On a momentum basis, the PMO is positive and we're also positive based on price and volume. Looking at our studies, we're still extreme, but coming down with the PMOs that are rising, we're still positive with the buy signals and not quite extreme, showing some improvement with the PMOs that are above zero. The NYSE bullish percent index kind of flattened out a little bit, but after giving us a reading below 30 has now crossed back above, that could be broader, a broader range positive signal. And the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index actually ticked down just a little bit. It's above 50, so it's positive, but it did pull back in Wednesday's session. We're looking at our short-term momentum, the slope oscillator is still looking positive. On an intermediate-term basis, the MACD is looking more positive. So when we look at all of our oscillators, we are now crossed over positive. 
We're still not extreme with our standard deviations chart. We're still in this plus two area. When we get nervous is when we go up and close into the S3 area, or not S3, the plus three area. The chicken oscillator is above zero, advancing still positive and not necessarily extreme, at least yet. The money flow showing improvement above 50 and advancing. That's positive. This is an extreme reading that we don't get very often here, but you can see when we had one last at the end of March where we did get an extreme reading and really the market just ended up going sideways after that. We don't know if that's what's going to happen this time, but the slowdown that we're seeing is being picked up by the ultimate oscillator, even though it continues to be positive. The Copic curve is also positive and now starting <clears throat> to cross above zero. The parabolic SCR is still positive with the dots underneath. And I tried to extend some of the lines here. We're kind of boxing ourselves in as far as trend lines. We cannot seem to get above this longer term trend line from the October 2022 lows to the March 2023 low and then extending this out. Now, you could say that this is looking a little more improved. We're seeing a series of higher highs and higher lows. Yeah, that's always a good thing. But we're just not moving all that much as far as the market is concerned. But when you look at just the bars themselves, this is still looking healthy. But if we really hit this resistance and start to come down and head into some negative seasonality, at least for a few days, we could bounce down from that. The Dow, or looking at traditional Dow theory, we ticked down a bit with the Dow as well as the transports. The utilities were also down. And so the transports continue to underperform the Dow. When we look at the ratio, the Dow is ticking back up just a little bit as it outperformed the transports. Now, both were down, but the Dow was down less than the transports. And then looking at the ratio, this is not positive for the market. The transport to S&P 500 ratio continues to decline in a positive environment. We want to see this ratio going up. The Zohorchak method has not come back to generating a full-blown buy signal yet. It did fall here a few weeks back, and we're just wondering if that's going to change at some point. The Staples to S&P 500 ratio is continuing to decline. And when you see other times when we spiked and then started to come down that often gave really good support to the s p we're wondering if that can continue here as the s p tries to go higher the s p to utilities ratio kind of bouncing around quite a bit utilities were weaker where the s p was up so this ratio went up slightly in the bigger picture we are advancing with this ratio and that often does give support to the s p Looking at the 10-day average of the highs minus the lows for the S&P, after getting an extreme negative reading, we are continuing to bounce up, but we're still below 50. That's kind of the dividing line between positive and negative. We're still hanging in there with our 19-day exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio. We're above zero based on price, even though we're declining, and we declined based on volume, but still above zero. The micro caps were down in Wednesday's session, but we have not set a new 52-week low. The hike in ASHI still is looking positive. The Keggy chart is still looking positive. The Ranko chart is positive, and the three-line break is also positive. The equal weight, where we had an update with the S&P, the equal weight was down. It's just showing that the broader market is underperforming. And this ratio is continuing to go up, showing that the big mega companies are outperforming the rest of the market. The Dow is still above its 50 and 200 day moving averages. We're chopping more or less sideways above this R1 level. So support is holding at least for right now. The diamonds continue to be positive because they're green. The NASDAQ 100 is still above this previous all time high. We're coming back up and trying to match this intraday high here. We need to see this continue to go up if things are to stay more positive. If we start to fall, this may end up acting as a resistance point since on an intraday basis, we pretty much matched this previous high. <clears throat> with the Qs, we are still positive and they are green with the Elder's Impulse system. On a momentum basis, the NASDAQ 100 continues to be positive when we're crossing above zero with the PPO. The NASDAQ is still above its 50-day moving average and above this R1 level. Didn't have a real gangbuster day, but so far has been holding up. Then looking at our FIB charts, we're in between the 50 and 61.8% retracement level, and we need to see, can we get beyond this previous high for the NASDAQ? If we do, and then we'll be going up here, we'll wonder if this 61.8% retracement level 
will end up providing overhead resistance. The small caps, which are showing a lot of weakness, down almost a percent. They gapped up, and now they're just falling back quite a bit now. And for the Russell 2000 small cap index, same thing. We're still above 50 with the RSI, but we are declining. We came up to the 50-day moving average, and now we're starting to fall back. And this is just not what you want to see. When you see a huge gap to the upside, you want to see a continuation of that. You could say, okay, we're going back and filling the gap here. Well, the stock, the small caps are going to really have to kick into gear to improve this chart. And the elder impulse system has now switched back over to neutral for the small caps. The mid caps also falling back after coming up to this R1 level and are looking a little more negative, but they've switched back over to neutral with the Elder's Impulse system for the mid caps. The FANG index, it's hanging in there. It's still breaking out above its 50-day moving average and also in a longer-term uptrend. And we're breaking out above this trend line that I drew down here to connect these two highs. So far, we've been able to stay above that. Longer term, the arithmetic scale, we'll still, we're still above the trend line going back to 2009 on the weekly chart. And we are seeing a little bit of an improvement here. The Qs to the S&P, discretionary tick down just a little bit to the S&P, but large cap growth is outperforming large cap value based on this measurement. And these are a couple of ETFs that are used to measure this. So the large caps are showing an improvement, the mid caps improving, and the small caps are trying to improve but can't get above their moving average, which is also declining. We're seeing a little bit of an improvement here with our new highs, new lows study, longer term. It's ticking back up, but we're still below zero. We're still above zero here with our indicator, which is slowly turning the red line, which is the 50 period moving average that we use in the previous chart. And it's trying to turn that back up, but not quite there yet. This is another signal, this longer term that was generated a few days ago. This is the ZWAG NYSE breadth for us. One of these signals is very rare. To see two of them within the same year is like off the charts rare. And this tends to stay on the books once it's generated going forward. And we look at the highs minus the lows and take a five period moving average in the broad market. We're showing some improvement here, but we're still below zero. The dollar was up in Wednesday's session, coming back up and trying to get above its 50 day moving average. The financial sector is still above both the 50 and 200 day moving average after generating a death cross. And interest rates continue to fall down here on the 10 year yield. So price is continuing to go up. We haven't broke out above this previous price point yet. We're still positive with the RSI. We're positive on a momentum basis, but longer term, we have a death cross. And here's the 10 to the five, which dropped back down and has now gone back to being inverted. Here's Tom Bally's research where November tends to be a very bullish month. It's usually the best month of the entire year, but utilities are not hot. Industrials are hot. We possibly are coming into this red area now from the 6th through the 9th based on his research, even though we're going to go beyond that a little bit this week, where sometimes we see some weakness before we see some strength coming back into the market. So what's our outlook for Thursday? It's still earnings season. We're still dealing with that. We're still wondering about everything happening in Israel. The technicals are still positive. We're still dealing with a short-term overbought condition and somewhat intermediate term. And we're right below that resistance level. We will get the weekly jobless claims. And that's it. Now, some folks say, oh, this is a big report. And we need to really pay attention to this. Sometimes it's influential, sometimes it's not. We tend to look at this in the bigger picture by using a moving average and then keeping an eye on all the different geopolitical events. And I understand there was some more bombing in Syria that the U.S. did. That doesn't seem to really impact the market, but it could have an impact on what's happening throughout the Middle East right now. Here's the economic calendar where on Friday we will get consumer confidence. Looking at the Stock Traders Almanac statistics for November 9th, we're neutral to negative with the Dow. Now, this goes from 2001 to 2021, and this takes all years, doesn't just take out the pre-election years, where we are negative with both the S&P and the NASDAQ. So this is something to be aware of here. And then we will be on the ninth trading day of the month where we do see a little bit of weakness during a pre-election year. That's the green dash line where with the regular green line, it does show that we tend to be more negative than positive. And then looking at the times when the current president is running for re-election, are we coming into this little period now where we might see some weakness before we see some more strength? 
Then this is a newer chart. I'm trying to keep this as updated as possible. Now, I ignore the gray line because you can make charts say whatever you want if you exclude certain periods of time. I'm looking at the black line, which is the average for the S&P 500, and then the red line, which is what the S&P is actually doing now, where we might see a little bit of weakness in here, and we might see some choppiness going into the latter part of November, but then we tend to see a pretty strong December after that, after chopping more or less sideways for a bit. And then here's another look at seasonality, where from here, going forward, going from 1950 up to 2022, this takes all the years together and does show positive seasonality. Then when we look at the NASDAQ, we're coming into the November month. Are we going to see a bit of a pullback, which sometimes is what we see? Kind of seeing that we're not really at that same point with the S&P 500. We're following the green line. Maybe we are going to see a little bit of weakness or possibly some more strength. How's that for decisiveness? And then the Bitcoin, where the blue line is trailing off, the longer measurements still continue to be positive. So when we look at the chart, Bitcoin's still holding up. It's now getting up into the 36, mid 36,000 range. So our scenarios, we're going, not going with the down one right now because we're just too positive with all of our charts, but we're at resistance and we're overbought. So that could produce some kind of a pullback that could let loose at about any time. Or are we just going to meander sideways like we've been doing so far this week? We're tending to lean more towards the positive side because our charts are positive, but be aware of that because we are at resistance and we are dealing with an overbought condition. We're also potentially dealing with some negative seasonality. We're not going with the sideways trend for right now because even though the ADX is weakening, it's still above 20, both on our short term and our intermediate term chart. So the warning signs, the daily special K chart, it's showing some improvement. I haven't been showing that. But it's still below the red line, so it's negative, as is the weekly chart. The longer-term equity put call ratio is still going up. And now I switch this back again to this slide. The five-period equity put call ratio is back to going up. The risk on posture is overall showing weakness, but could be showing some improvement. The new high, new low study is negative, but trying to tick back up, but it's still well below zero. All of the other indexes, the Russell, the small caps, and the mid caps, they're still working off of death crosses. The financial sector is working off of a death cross, but we're back above the 50 and 200 day moving averages. Positive signs. Growth could be showing some signs of improving. We're seeing that intraday, not so much end of day, and it depends on what charts you look at, but it could be showing some improvement there, which could be positive for the market. We do have another swag NYSE breadth thrust that was signaled recently. On a momentum basis in the S&P and the NASDAQ 100, we are positive. The parabolic SAR chart is positive. Here's a new one. The vortex indicator is positive now. And what the BPI, the bullish percent index for the S&P, is above 30 and advancing and is not above the 50 point yet, but it is showing a lot of improvement. Small and mid-cap growth has been chopping sideways. I showed you the mid-cap growth there, and it's looking a little stronger, where small cap growth is still in a longer-term uptrend, but it's really chopping. So our conclusion, we're positive, we're still dealing with this overbought condition, and we're still underneath resistance. We can say that same thing in the short term. In the intermediate term, we're slightly overbought, but we're still at resistance no matter what time frame you look at. But we're still positive in the long term because we're above the 200-day simple moving average. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you in the next video.